Well, world leaders have been arriving in New York for the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly. 193 countries will be represented. U.S. President Donald Trump will address the assembly on Tuesday, his first address. Several African leaders are also there, including the presidents of Ghana, Somalia, Malawi, Uganda, Nigeria, and South Africa. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari is due to address the assembly on Tuesday. He'll be focusing on UN reform and refugees. Let's get to you more now on that story. I'm joined live from New York by our UN correspondent, John Terry. John, leaders are gathering in New York ahead of Tuesday's addresses. Can you talk us through the program for Tuesday? Hey, Beatrice, welcome to the 72nd General Assembly of the United Nations here in New York. Yeah, what's going to happen tomorrow is what always happens tomorrow. That is that the whole thing will kick off with a speech by the Brazilian. And that's because Brazil was the first president of the General Assembly. So by tradition, they go first. And then the way it works out is that the U.S. president goes second. So Donald Trump will make his long-awaited U.N. maiden speech tomorrow. And I think it's around about 10.30 Eastern time. I shall have to check that out. Also tomorrow, we're going to hear from the French president, the new installed Emmanuel Macron, a very young French president, and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, is in town and he will be addressing the General Assembly tomorrow. I think probably Trump will concentrate on the DPRK, Macron probably terrorism, if I had to guess, and Benjamin Netanyahu, obviously Iran. But as you suggested in the intro, there are lots of African leaders here and tomorrow alone on the first day of Leaders Week speeches, we're going to hear from Guinea and Morocco and Zambia. And of course, President Bereri of Nigeria will be speaking as well. Well, that one, of course, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari, as you mentioned there, he will be speaking tomorrow. So what's he expected to focus on? Well, President Bahari, when he speaks tomorrow, I think he's got, uh, uh, there's a range of things which truly affect the region that Nigeria is in and its immediate neighbors. For example, Nigeria is one of four countries in the world that has a famine going on, the others being Yemen, Somalia, South Sudan, and of course, Northeast Nigeria. So he may well touch on that. And the famine has been prompted by a number of issues, including terrorism, but also there's migration, we've got internally displaced people, we've got climate change, all of that. So there's plenty of rich fodder for him to focus on when it comes to the issue of the famine in the country. And then the United Nations is seeking to set up an anti-terrorism unit, and that's because there's so much terrorism going on in the world. This is a sort of project that is being promoted by the Secretary General Antonio Guterres, but Boko Haram, of course, will very much play into that. So I think that really, when you look at it all, it's, it's best summed up this way. President Buhari has a chance to really put Africa on the map in a way that it really isn't at the moment at the UN because the agenda is being driven by the DPRK and Iran and the Rohingya crisis on the border of Myanmar and Bangladesh. And of course, John, uh, US President Donald Trump is also due to make the f his first ever address at the General Assembly. So what can we expect yeah. from him? Of course, a lot on his plate at the moment. Yeah, well, as I say, he is up second tomorrow, Tuesday, the first day of Leaders Week speeches. And we, I think, expect him to concentrate on many things. But I think one of the key issues is going to be the DPRK for obvious reasons. I think that it's very interesting. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations was asked on the influential Sunday broadcast yesterday that set the agenda for the political week in the U.S. She was a Nikki Haley as her name. She was asked, how can your boss come here uh, when he's been so rude to so many world leaders and so rude to the United Nations itself? And her answer was that basically it's a new day at the United Nations. The Trump administration during the election campaign, when they weren't in power, they were very rude towards the U.N. and lots of world leaders. But now that they are in power, there is a, a feeling of a new day here. So we're looking for Donald Trump to give a presidential and certainly diplomatic speech, nothing like he comes up with on Twitter. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're probably going to hear a little bit about UN reform. That is very dear to a lot of American hearts and dear to this administration. And the president met with the Secretary General today, Monday, to have a, a meeting on that very issue, reforming the Security Council and reforming some of the other 
agencies within the United Nations. All right, uh, John Terrett for us there in New York.